Today, I'm going to walk you through how we migrated our MySQL database from a self-managed VPS to a fully managed Amazon RDS database. This was a big step in improving our reliability because our previous server provider didn't have the best track record with regards to their uptime. I'll cover how we set up RDS as a replica and how we switched our Laravel app to the new database with minimal downtime. Before we dive in, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then let's go. We were hosting our database on a pretty beefy VPS running MySQL. The server had 64 gigs of RAM and cost us around $500 monthly. And while the setup worked, it also came with many problems. We had to patch the server manually. We didn't have a decent failover. Setting up a reach replica or a staging server was pretty intensive. We couldn't set a maintenance window, so we were at the mercy of the provider's schedule. And let me tell you, this one was really painful. And as our platform and ultimately our database grew, this became a massive liability. So we decided to move to Amazon RDS because it's fully managed and it's pretty cost effective. Things like a standby instance, point in time recovery, backups, reach replica and more are pretty easy to configure in RDS. And this lets me sleep soundly at night. Our architecture looked a little something like this. We have a load balancer, behind which are three application servers. And all of these application servers have the same database connection that goes to our main database server. And they all have the same cache driver, which in our case is a separate Redis server. The thought of migrating our database honestly kept me up at night, mainly because I didn't have any relevant experience. The last time I migrated our database around seven years prior, it was pretty easy. I just took a database dump, imported it and switched the connection. And this was doable because we only had a handful of customers and the import process only took around two minutes. Since then, our database had grown to around 75 gigabytes and on a beefy machine, importing it took around three hours. We cannot afford to go down for three hours, so I had to come up with a better approach. We basically want to start replicating the main database to RDS. And the first thing we need to do is actually dump and import the database. The way you can dump your database is using the following command. You can say mysql dump, you can pass in the user, you can say dash p so you can enter your password, and then you'll say single transaction and skip block tables. These flags are often used together for hot backups, which means you won't have any downtime and the backup process is non-blocking. Then we can say master data equals two, and the master data flag will record the bin log or GTID position, and by passing in two, it will record it in a comment and we can dump everything to dump.sql. After the dump completed, we can note down the GTID information using this command. We can say head-n50, which means we will get 50 lines, and we will pass in our file, which is dump.sql. And somewhere in these 50 lines, you will see a GTID slave position and a string. And we need to keep track of this string. Next, I imported this database dump in our RDS database, and this was a process that took around three hours. Quick tip, using the screen command, you can run this task in the background on the server, so you don't need to keep a connection open. You can say screen-s, let's say db import. This will start a new screen session. And in here, we can do our long running task. For now, I will just say pvd and our current directory gets printed. Then we can detach the current screen by saying control a d. We will see a message detached. And if I say screen-ls, we will see we have a screen here, it's called db import, and we can reattach to it by saying screen-r db import, and we can pick up where we left off. Any long running tasks like importing a database will keep running in this session. So this is very useful. After the database import completed, we have to start the replication. If you ever set up a replication on MySQL, you probably know you have to call store procedures like this. You can say call mysql.start replication to start replication, and you can say call mysql.stop replication to stop replication. On RDS, however, these store procedures are unavailable and you need to use the RDS prefixed counterparts because they do some magic behind the scenes. This means that start replication becomes RDS start replication and stop replication becomes RDS stop replication. And this is actually the case for many stored procedures on RDS. 
The first thing we need to do when the database has been imported is call MySQL RDS set external master GTID. We can pass in our host, which is the primary database or initial database. We have the port, we have a user and a password, and then we have to pass in the GTID position, which is a string we copied earlier. And after that, we can say call MySQL RDS start replication to start replicating. And we can check the status by saying call MySQL RDS replica status. In my case, after a delta of around a week, the replication caught up in about six hours. An important thing to note is that your source database probably has a limit on how long the bin log files are kept around. So you need to make sure the replication starts within that time frame. You can check this as follows on the source database. You can say show variables like expire logs days, or you can say show variables like bin log expire logs seconds. And this depends on the version of MySQL you're running. One thing I cannot stress enough is that you have to do dry runs before migrating your production app. You have to run all the possible scenarios before you actually commit to migrating. Only after I felt comfortable, I scheduled the migration on a Sunday night. Our traffic pattern is pretty predictable. We have around two big waves of traffic on our platform. One at lunch and one at dinner. As you can see on the map, after dinner the traffic dies down quickly and by midnight, there are virtually no users left on the platform. Most of our merchants are based in Belgium, so we don't have to worry about time zones. On top of that, Mondays are the calmest moment on the platform, so Sunday night posed the lowest risk of migrating our database. That being said, we did announce the scheduled maintenance way in advance to our customers. And we have a pretty clever system for announcing these type of system-wide notifications. Almost every merchant has a thermal printer connected to one of our products, in which we build a custom notification system. Whenever we send out a notification, our apps, let's say for example our point of sale system, will receive this notification and print out the notification on the thermal printer. This way we are 100% sure the merchant reads the notification and is informed about the downtime. When the maintenance window arrived, the plan was super clear. I took out every application server except one and I put the entire application in maintenance mode. Then I put the database in read-only mode and you can do so by saying flush tables with read lock or you can say set global read-only equals one. Then I waited until the RDS instance caught up to the main database and this was nearly instant. I updated the DB connection in my environment variable to point to this new RDS database, after which I could take the application out of maintenance mode. The application was in maintenance mode for around 3 minutes, which in hindsight could have been reduced even further, but I'm not complaining here. After some manual tests, I updated the other two application servers and put them back in the load balancing pool, so our application was ready to receive lots and lots of traffic again. I kept the old database around as an archive for maybe a month before getting rid of it entirely. I'm very happy with how the migration turned out. It was an ideal scenario, mainly thanks to the many dry runs I did. I also documented everything in great detail so I could always fall back to my written docs if something were to go wrong. And that concludes the video. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll hope to see you in the next one.